Special Operations. Covert Ops. Espionage. The Team House. With your hosts, Jack Murphy and David Park. Yeah, back on the rails. L- LM bar. Well, yeah, and talking about sort of the one foot in the water verse, like, I think, because we saw in the war on drugs, too, is that when there's money going into something. Everyone grabs Everybody wants a part it. of yeah. it, and you get mission creep. Because um, everybody says, we can do that. I don't think it had as much to do with um, money, or at least I don't think NSW's motivation was money. I think NSW's motivation is there's a war going on. Right. And we're not going to miss this. Right, right, right. right. Which makes sense. I mean. Which is always... You know, I don't want to keep edging back toward the book. Right, I do, but um, that's always the uh, that's always the bias or the uh, um, it's a bias like towards the action. I mean, you have elite yeah. commandos. Of course, they want to get into right. the war. Right. right. Yeah. But there's also there's something else that I didn't um, I didn't anticipate, and that's this. Uh, you know, it it's the uh, impulse from you know the the branch of service that the you know the SEAL teams are attached to, which is the U.S. Navy. Uh, they also want to get into the war. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. they use the SEAL teams mm-hmm. as this sort of harpoon <laughs> that they launch out, and then they grab that rope and they pull themselves in. Yeah. That makes sense. I mean, uh, when b- between the SEALs and the, the fighter pilots, like, those are their big recruiting tools also, you know? I mean, the, like, the, the Navy... Yeah. Tom Cruise and Charlie Sheen, man. Yep. Absolutely. I've never met a Tom Cruise in the Navy, but I've met lots of Charlie Sheens. Yeah. Tiger blood and all that. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Um, so yeah, walk us through a little bit more of. Uh, I'd like to hear about some of the um, operations that you were doing in, in Ambar, and you know what that was like. You're still a relatively young sailor. This is your first experience seeing real combat. Um, if you can walk us through sort of like what the mission was, jocking up for those missions, and, and starting to go outside the wire. So we so that that deployment we were following. Um, the uh, uh, SEAL Team Three, the sort of the, the task unit bruiser uh, era. So we were we were coming right on the heels of that, right at the uh, sort of the beginning of the surge. Mm-hmm. So it was a it was a mix of you know counterinsurgency type FID and then you know uh, straight direct action, you know Vietnam type SEAL stuff, mm-hmm. taking boats up the Euphrates. Um, inserting, offsetting, uh, patrolling to some place and either doing a hit or laying up someplace and waiting to uh, see if anybody was going to come out. So on uh, one of the last missions, we, um, we, we did a really great job of uh, uh, getting in to this town. It was sort of like a suburb of Ramadi. Um, it was... Uh, it was along the Euphrates. It was, uh, but it was, it was you know this little town of Abu Bali, and it was uh, we'd inserted, we'd um, taken two uh, separate uh, houses um, on either sides of a of a little lake, and we were you know positioned to sort of cover the flank of a marine patrol that was going to be coming up, and uh, at one point, you know, right a uh, little bit after sunset, we had a uh, the Marines got contacted. Um, one of the Marines uh, almost got shot. I mean, he he took a you know bullet through the crotch of his pants, and they, they weren't going to get up after that. So uh, they asked for our support. So one of our units on the southern side of the lake, I was in the northern uh, uh, spot. He uh, gathered a little team together to go hunt a sniper in broad daylight, which isn't particularly comfortable. But right before they, they left the house, there was a, you know, the, this little, you know, Iraqi or insurgent sniper team comes bebopping out of an alleyway in track suits and masks and RPGs and everything like that. And uh, they took care of the problem pretty quickly. But uh, as that was happening, I don't know what happened, but there was a, you know, a, another element that saw our position on the north and contacted us pretty good and uh, pinned us down. Like, we, there was not a lot that we could do. One of our... Uh, one of our uh, guys, uh, SEAL uh, Mark Robbins, he was on a, uh, the top floor of this little structure that we, we were in. He popped up. I think he, he engaged one uh, fighter, 
killed him, and then I uh, was about to engage this machine gunner who was pinning us down, and right before he engaged him, he saw this guy with an RPG, so he shifted his attention. The machine gunner he killed the guy with the RPG, but the other guy shot him through the eye. Oh, man. It uh, went through the head, went, went through the right eye, out the back of the head. Um, and uh, so we spent the rest of that engagement just trying to save him. Mm -hmm. uh, and then it was uh, it, it was touch and go th there for a second. The other, so the other, uh, the other team from the south side of the lake, they you know risked everything. They came around that lake. They fought through house after house, getting to our position. Um, took up you know a little um, flanking position on that uh, unit. But there was this other other guy, this marine, who mm -hmm. was <coughs> he was the the uh, Top commander. I mean, he was the he was the commander of the of the of the fob down there, but his marines were out. But he he was at the talk, so he gathered together this little uh, group of marines. You know, took two Humvees up this road that we had never known to not be IED. Right. Braved this you know kind of mad dash to get to our position. Put his Humvees between the insurgents and a uh, you know a field, so we could call in a. Um, uh, a medevac for, you know, Mark, uh, which was incredible. It was incredible, you know, to see, you know, another, you know, he wasn't a SEAL or anything like that. And to see this guy, like, you know, risk everything for some, some, you know, junior SEAL that he'd never met. Throw a posse together and just throw a right posse out. together. Yeah. Did and, the, and the posse that he gathered together, I mean, he, the, the, the funniest story that I have from that was that this guy, uh, he, at one point, he was trying to, you know, I was trying to get a smoke out there myself, but he was, um, he was trying to get a smoke out to, you know, signal the the medevac helicopter. So he's yelling up to his gunner. He's like, "I need a smoke. I need a smoke." And this, you know, eighteen year old kid, he like hands him a pack of cigarettes. <laughs> <laughs> God damn it! <laughs> you know, I, I feel like every squad's got one. Yeah. 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 It was probably me back in, back yeah, in the day. It was probably me too. <laughs> but it, but uh, Mark, uh, he lived and he uh, he managed to you know despite having his you know eye not missing an eye and having a Gatorade cap sized hole in the back of his head, he walked to the helicopter. Wow. He, Jesus. He knew that he was going to be taking another gun out of the fight if he you know. Let them carry him, so he he literally muscled his way to the helicopter. That's insane. That's amazing. The guy took a machine gun round through PKM round right through the wow the seven six two yeah. by fifty four round through yeah. the eyeball. That's incredible. <laughs> yeah, he's a uh, he's he's a tough kid. Or he's not a kid anymore, but he's uh, he's an incredible person. Did do you? Uh, because can you hear me? Okay. <laughs>